Hey folks, N1TZU here. I'm sure that um, probably a lot of you remember the video that I did on the man pack, uh, the uh, Yesu FT857D man, ba uh, man pack um, dot 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 homebrew. Well, over the past few months, I decided to rebuild it, and um, I'll show you what I ended up doing. Because uh, uh, I'm sure all you remember, it was a, it was a frame style design. Because um, I think what I'll do when I do the video, I'll I'll uh, post a short section of it before this video. So, anyways, um, what I ended up doing was I ended up actually taking quarter inch aluminum plate and fabricating two side plates, a bottom plate and a front plate where the radio is actually attached <clears throat> and actually encased it in a box, made a box design. You know, let me go around and kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, let me get the Alice pack out of the frame. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, so basically, <clears throat> you can see here where I've got uh, I've got actually quarter inch plate here, uh, which is also the same on the bottom, uh, and then uh, as well as on the top that holds all the components for the front. Uh, what I wanted to do is make a design that emulated kind of like a uh, you know a PRC type radio, and then this is a sixteenth sixteenth inch aluminum plate, um, and then. Of course, on this side over here, sorry for the shadow, uh, on this side over here is diamond plate, aluminum diamond plate. So basically, what I ended up doing was, uh, if you take a look here, uh, basically this is the, of course, the HF antenna, the SGC300. And uh, let me back up and give you a look at that. It uh, basically a nine foot whip. Uh, helical wound <clears throat> vertical and uh, that's for the HF and then of course an old an old uh, diamond BHF UHF vertical so what I did here in the in the front plate uh, if you take a look um, basically I got an input for charging the uh, lithium ion battery pack in the base um, I got these U U type uh, connectors at uh, or bolts I should say uh, I think what they are is they're kind of like uh, uh, what would you call it uh, uh, framing bolts I get at Lowe's and then uh, you know basically a UHF uh, UHF uh, connector that goes through the front plate uh, for the UH side of the radio and uh, I will end up showing you the inside of it here shortly, uh, and then of course that's for the VHF UHF. And while the radio is not in use, I, I put on these little cap things that you can actually cap the cap the uh, antenna connection with if you want. And then uh, this little device right here, uh, what I did is I ended up putting the uh, radio faceplate on a separation kit and it's connected to a little piece of aluminum that's hinged as you can see over here uh, so you can actually open this up and have access to an LDG tuner that's actually inside the radio because uh, the LDG tuner box is not waterproof at all so I figured well I'd like to be able to get it inside <clears throat> so it's at least semi water resistant and you can see here uh, on the back of this plate you can see where I cut a hole in it and mounted the separation uh, separation uh, holder for the for the uh, 857 front face plate and then here basically what I got is a uh, switch to shut off the speaker and uh, let me see, let's go over to this side here. I got uh, audio input. Uh, I've got a military plug for the military handset. And I've also got an 8 pin. I mounted an 8 pin. Let me get that, take that off so I can show you. 
I got an eight pin connector so <clears throat> I can actually plug in uh, my sword and headset that I had to completely rewire put in a uh, electret uh, type microphone uh, but you can see here I got an eight pin connector I can plug right into that so I can run the headset if I want yeah we'll set that down for now um, and then uh, let's see over here of course there's a, a ground uh, so you can run ground wires or counterpoise of course and then there's a 12 volt input now the 12 volt input runs on this double pole double pole, double throw switch when it's in the middle uh, I can use shore power regular 12 volt shore power input to the radio directly to the radio when it's switched in the L position what it does is it steps down the lithium ion battery pack because it's uh, quite a bit more voltage than the FT-857 will handle so I've got it uh, rigged up with a, uh, a step down Zener, Zener uh, type device and when the battery gets low enough where I can direct from the battery I can switch it in the high voltage position so I get the most use I can get out of the battery and then of course I've got two, uh, two antenna connections the uh, portable HF which runs on number one of the LDG and then uh, if I want to run say string up a dipole I've got a antenna 2 connection so <clears throat> excuse me um, so anyways uh, got the handset there and um, you know, I'll show you the inside of the rig uh, so basically come over here you can see here I've got uh, a couple of latches that I do here and basically open up the inside of the radio and uh, let's make sure I'm zoomed out all the way here <clears throat> and here's the uh, here's the uh, lithium-ion battery pack uh, hopefully I've got uh, enough sunlight here let's uh, turn it a little bit to one side you can see the uh, right in here you can see the little button that you can push to look at the battery voltage if you want but the FT-857 has battery voltage right on the faceplate so you really don't have to get inside the rig to look at the battery voltage um, and then uh, <coughs> you can see how I've got <clears throat> in here you can see how I got the 857 mounted and it's mounted on the top of uh, let's see here I got enough lighting I got it mounted on the top of the LDG tuner um, let's see here and then of course this is the uh, Zener diode step down uh, what it does is it steps the 16.5 volt battery pack down to uh, steps it down about a volt and a half um, and what I've got is I've got two two outputs one that goes through uh, the Zener and the other one that's direct uh, right up to the back side of this double pole double throw switch and then of course here you can see the uh, HF vertical connection and then behind it is where the number two connection is for portable um, dipole set up you know ladder line or coax connection I mean you know so <clears throat> and then of course there's the speaker and there's the switch for the speaker um, so uh, hopefully I covered everything here uh, so let me step back here a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of how I built the inside of it hopefully there's enough lighting here I don't re I really can't see the camera all that well uh, or at least the LEDs, I mean the display. So let me step back here and so I can get a broader view of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyways, uh, let's uh, close this back up. And then what I'll show you what I did was uh, I actually took an Alice pack. I found an old Alice pack at a army surplus place here nearby and uh, <clears throat> redid the Alice pack so I can actually 
set up the, uh, the radio right on the Alice pack. Um, what I did is I took a piece of aluminum plate, bent it, hooked it to the back of the Alice pack, and then I took some tent pole material and made a bracing for it. And I put on these put on these latches here, and you can see the latches hook right to the same kind of latches that hold the door shut. So um, let's see here. Uh, what else have I got to cover? Uh, basically, part of the reason why I did this is I really wanted a smaller package. I was kind of shooting for less weight, but that didn't happen. So. <laughs> um, you know kind of one of those things if you I use these use this mostly on a you know when I'm camping anyways you know it's on a table most of the time so <clears throat> once uh, once in a great blue moon I might take it take it packing but uh, let me uh, let me hook it to the Alice pack here and actually probably what I'll do is I'll actually set the uh, set the uh, camera up on a tripod so that way you can see how it uh, connects to the Alice pack. I'll stand by a second here. Okay, I fumbled a little bit with that, but you can see here. Yep, got the shadow going on. You can see here, I've got uh, basically these connectors that connect it right to the Alice pack, and uh, got it so I can actually pack it into any place I want, or up on a mountain, or and it probably weighs. Oh, I'm gonna say. Probably a total of uh, 30, I'm going to say 35 pounds, 32 pounds roughly, not too bad. Yeah, so let's see if actually, uh, this band conditions aren't really that great today, so I'm probably not going to get much of anything going on here. Uh, let's see if anybody's actually on uh, 20 meters. Yeah, it seems so the bands are pretty dead today. Not much going on.
let's go up to and basically give it a tune. Oop, that was it. Yeah, pretty quiet today. Yeah, you can hear it tuning. November 1 portable. Alpha Fox Trust 5. Mike something, come on in. I'll set the camera on the tripod and see if maybe we can get into the maritime net. November 1, Tango Zulu Uniform Portable. November 1, Portable. Yeah, sounds like the bands are pretty, pretty weak today. November 1 portable. November 1 Tango Zulu Uniform Portable. Running 75 watts off the battery. November 1, Tango Zulu Uniform Portable.
November 1 portable. Number one, Tango Zulu Uniform Portable. November 1 portable. to do another video on a day when the bands are running better. But anyways, this, this gives you a, a, hopefully a pretty good idea of how I did everything here. Uh, to uh, Really, pretty much my goal was a slightly smaller package, a little bit more water resistant, weather resistant, that kind of thing. So, anyways, hope you folks liked it and I'll uh, do an updated video eventually here when the bands are a little bit better. Seven threes all.